Hi guys, it's Ian Wilson from Q-Tips again and today we are going to carry on with part two of the first part of our, our tutorial series on, on creating a layout. If you missed uh, part one, I'll leave a description in the, well, I'll put a description below the video which you can go and go and have a look for the link to that part one video. Okay, so we've, what we did is uh, identify our site um, and now we need to, to create a layout that we can print and use on a little hard copy piece of paper where we we actually get out our pencil and start drawing the layout. So a couple of things we can do. We can I always like to keep my table of contents fairly clean. So I just want to remove this layer which is not relevant anymore. I'm not going to be using that. So it's just that one can travel. And this one I'm going to turn into a boundary only. So if I go into style, simple fill, I want to change this to no brush. And then I can just make this a little bigger to see everything. My outline width, I'm going to get 0 0.5. Let's see how that looks. Okay, these structures are a little uh, heavy. So I'm just going to change that color to something lighter. Like a light gray. That's good. And these control points, possibly a little big. Um, I'm going to be scanning this image later and they're going to be quite fat so I'm just wondering if, if I want to have an accurate georeferencing uh, I want to make these a little smaller and they don't need to be any color in particular um, I wonder if 0, 0.0 or 0 0.5 would work let's see how that looks so tiny dots I think that should be okay we can, if we uh, digitize or um, if we at least scan this those should come up and we should be able to use those as uh, control points later. Okay, so there's just a few other things I want to add. So we're going to be developing this piece of land. Now, right now, the only thing we know about it, based on what we see here, is that there's buildings here, and the rest of the property you can go hell for leather. Um, but you can't, uh, because there's a flay here, and there's also a, a flood boundary. So let's turn on some extra data. So we're going to go to the physical folder that I've got here. Let's turn all these on and see if they tell the story. Yes, they do. Okay, so the, the hundred year flood is this blue area. So we're just going to change that color to something transparent. Uh, it doesn't actually need to be transparent, but for this example, it's, it's going to do the job, I think. I say okay. And then for the, this is the boundary. This is the actual line of that same flood flood line. I'm just going to choose a little dotted line. Uh, so I'm going to just delete that and make this a dark blue. There's a dark blue there. How does that look? Okay, so there we go. So you see this existing uh, building is actually already within that 100-year flood line. So they might be scurrying up the mountain if that flood comes. And then we've got our contours. The contours... Well, maybe make those thinner as well. Um, color wise, -ish. yeah, color wise, it kind of kind of works. Maybe make it a little darker, and then actually that thickness is fine. Apply that. There we go. Okay, so these, uh, if we just click on the information here, that is the 20, 25 meters above sea level. And if this is a five meter contour, it's 20. And we slowly go down. So that might be something worth uh, seeing when we print this out. So let's label that quickly. So if we go to uh, selected in the table of contents, we go to properties. And then choose labels. And for, we are going to show labels for this layer. And then label width height. Okay, that's all fine. I like to put a buffer on my text. A little buffer adds a white halo. So so if there's something black behind text that's been written in black, the white halo makes it stand out. So that, that's why the buff is always useful. Now we're going to put it parallel to the line and on the line. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, maybe a little big. I'm going to make that a little smaller. It doesn't have to be that big. Um, so under text here, I'm going to make this 7. And for placement, it's above the line. 
Let's see how that. Let's see. I've just turned off off above the line. Let's see how that one works. I prefer that. Okay. Okay. So there we go. So now we can create a little. Um, uh, what they in Q just they call it a layout. Or no, actually they don't. They call it um, the print canvas. So so we're going to use the composer manager to to create a a print canvas. Okay. So we're going to open this up and. We are going to call this, we're going to add one, and it's going to be called, actually let's just call it print, okay, and here it is, so there we go, so that opens up a new, a new composer, okay, so the first thing we want to do is just set up our, our composition or page settings. Now the default is A4 landscape. Now I already know that we're going to need A3 and we're going to need it in portrait. Okay. And that's because at the scale I want to print at, the the whole layout won't fit on an A4. So I've just scaled that up slightly. Now there's also the, the resolution, which also I think is probably defaulting to 300 normally. Now now that I'm going to change to 200, and you can change it even further. You can go right down to 144 DPI if you're only ever going to be printing at at um, at A4 or or at A3. Okay. Um, if you, for instance, wanted to then export this as an image and at some point use a projector to project it uh, during a presentation, that's when you might want to choose a higher resolution, uh, say 300 or even more than that. But for this uh, example, 200 uh, dots per inch is fine, and that is set up. So I'm just going to zoom to the full extent again. There we go. And now we need to add the the actual uh, add a new map. So I'm just going to drag a map in here, and I want it to go all the way to the the edge of the the layout. So I can do that by just grabbing with the with the item or the map the selected item. Or object, I can just toggle the edges and drag it, and it's it actually is quite nice. It actually snaps to the edge of the of the uh, the A3 portrait view. So uh, back in item properties, I'm going to change the the uh, the rendering option to render, and not cache, and then the scale I want to set it up at is 1000. And I'm choosing a scale of 1000. Because that'll make uh, you, um, drawing the the layout a lot easier. With a scale of 1,000, um, 10 millimeters is, is the same as 10 meters. So one millimeter equals one meter, and that just makes things a lot easier. Uh, if you had a scale of 2,000, which is what I would need to use to fit on on the A A4, then I would need to double everything up. So a 10 meters would would equal 20 meters. Which just makes things confusing, and I'm more more inclined to make a mistake if at that scale. Um, on the other hand, if you had a scale ruler, you could just use the scale on your ruler. You just flip that over and just make sure that it's the same as the as the as the scale that you've chosen. So I'm happy with uh, a scale of 1,000. I just want to orientate this uh, map view a bit better. I'm going to drag it up here. Okay, so we're set at a3, but now there's a trick. I uh, I only have an A4 printer, so now with the setup at A3, I just need to change this back to A4 and landscape, and then you'll see this top section. If I grab the actual map, it's only going to print that section there, and then what we'll do is we'll print one page. I'll drag this up to there. And print the second one. Okay, so it's going to print the. I'm first going to print the top, then I'm going to print the bottom, and then I'm going to use uh, a splicing technique just to join those two pages together. So let's print that first section first. In fact, I just want to drag it up a little more. So I use this little option to to drag the contents of the map up a bit. There's my there's one of my control points. There's the other one. So those are going to be printed out. So I'm happy with that, and we can send this to the printer. Right, that first one's printed out. 
So I'm going to make sure that I select the little tool to select or move the item. And just drag that up a little further. Okay, so now that's down there. I'm just going to drag it down just a tad. Because as I'm looking at my, my print in front of me, I see this, this 15 meter contour line is, is what I'm going to be, or part of it is what I'm going to be using to line up my, my map. And it isn't shown in my first print. So I've just dragged it up slightly just so that it uh, overlaps nicely. And we make sure that my control point is one there and one there. And then if you look at the edge, here's the edge of my, A, my A4. Just make sure that that is also included. Well, those are also included, and we can print that second section. Okay, so I think we're going to leave it there for, for this tutorial for now. And uh, join me in the next one, where I'll show you how to splice two A4 pages together to make an A3. Okay, so join me for that one. Cheers.